Michael St. Laurent, a senior consultant here at Wider Funnel, uh, also known as MSL or MISL, or I think you've got a lot of names around here. Yep. <laughs> so we're talking today about uh, a subject that is near and dear to our hearts, which is experimentation velocity. So Mike, first of all, uh, what can we learn from Henry Ford about uh, experimentation velocity? Yeah, I think uh, Henry Ford is a really great example because uh, when we think back to the early 1900s when he was starting the company, uh, he was really able to pull away from the competition with the creation of the assembly line. Uh, and I think that that's a really interesting comparable when we think about Henry was trying to produce cars, and in our world we're trying to produce experiments, and there's actually quite a lot uh, in line with that. And when he's just producing one car, there's a, a process to do that, but when he suddenly has to produce hundreds or thousands of them, then that same process that he started with no longer makes any sense. And he was able to recognize that the uh, at that scale, he needed to change the way that his whole system operated. Um, and that specialization and uh, automation was really the way that he was able to do that. Right, so his innovation wasn't in looking at how to make a better car necessarily, but how to make a better car system that produces cars faster and more reliably. So yeah. let's talk about the common reasons that companies get stalled in trying to increase their uh, experiment velocity. Yeah, so I think one of the reasons why uh, companies get stalled along the way is that they're trying to replicate what's made them successful creating one and creating 10, and then trying to apply that at the scale of 100. When you're working with just 10 experiments per year, uh, then you have a certain number of people that are involved in a certain process that you've built. Uh, but getting to the mark of 100 and much higher, there's so many more people that have to be involved. Like no longer can that be a one person uh, team mm -hmm. or like one manager. You're gonna have multiple business units. Mm -hmm. Those people are gonna compete with one another. Like what if they wanna run experiments on the same page at the same time? Mm -hmm. um, what if they have competing goals because each of those managers or business units has been incentivized to drive in different directions? Mm -hmm. um, and then how are those groups gonna share you know, information across their teams that these are problems that don't exist when you're creating 10. Right, so the complexity of the system doesn't scale linearly with the uh, uh, velocity of experiments. Exactly, and much like Henry Ford, at some point you need to take, like, zoom out and look at that whole process as a, as a system uh, and evaluate where, you know, you might have constraints in that process. Okay, so what's the difference then between getting to 10 experiments per year versus getting to 100 experiments per year? Uh, there's a few categories. There's, there's certainly the, the process that needs to be evaluated um, because quite simply it's just not going to be the same, that there's going to be more stakeholders that are involved. There's probably at that level like a lot of uh, coordination work that has to be done that, that just doesn't have to be. Um, also this the way that the team is structured and the accountability, like making sure that there's the right KPIs and metrics in place to both judge the individuals in the program and the program as a whole. Uh, and make sure that everyone is very clear on their responsibilities and who overlaps with with what and you know where people we don't want people to be competing <laughs> mm -hmm. um, over the same resources a lot of the time uh, also the culture is going to change that uh, right to get to build 10 you only need to get really one person on board um, but to build 100 you're going to have to really inject that into the culture of the company and and that's difficult um, and then the skills of the employees are going to have to be different that, uh, you know, you can get by running 10 with maybe one person who knows what they're doing and, and has the expertise there. But at 100, you know, you're going to have to train multiple people, find people who have the skills to do that uh, and make sure that, that that education is passed through the company because, you know, no longer can you necessarily keep an eye on, on every, every experiment that's going out the door. That You have to have some trust and faith in the people that they're going to execute uh, mm -hmm. appropriately. Uh, and then lastly is just the technology available that right. that you know to, to run more sophisticated experiments you need better tech, uh, simply put, and you can't get by with just maybe like a free testing tool that maybe you have to invest in something uh, more substantial that has all of the different capabilities that you need to operate at that size. All right, so what you're touching on then are the, are the five components that um, we, we talk about with experiment velocity, the process, accountability, culture, expertise and technology and that's particularly important when you go from 10 to 100 because you run into these barriers they're much more acutely I guess. Alright so what should someone consider in structuring their experimentation program? 
yeah, so there's a, there's a whole lot. And I think before answering that question, we have to briefly describe what are the different structures available. Uh, and really, we have three options. And, and they're not uh, necessarily all distinct from each other. They really exist on a bit of a spectrum. Um, and on one side, there's a fully centralized model, which is really that one team scales to serve an entire company. Um, and that's usually how the centralized model works, is that team does the strategy, they do the, the wireframes, the design, the development, the analysis, uh, and all, of the, all they do is, is interface with a business unit to gather ideas and to um, feedback results from the experiment. And then on the other side, there's the fully decentralized model where really every business unit or every part of a company operates completely independently and they have their own processes, their own experts, their own you know, development resources, uh, and they're really operating on their own. Uh, and then in the middle, there's sometimes a hybrid model that's used where a lot of the production work gets decentralized, like the actual development and the building, but then a lot of the strategic work stays centralized. A centralized model is really great if like things to consider are if there's limited talent available for experimentation in, in your area that like decentralized teams, you're allowing a lot of different groups to experiment on their own. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, you need a lot of people who then know how to experiment. And that can be really hard. There's going to be a number of other factors as well. Like you're going to want to consider the culture of the organization. Um, a lot of startups, for example, are going to probably steer towards decentralized models because they have like a, a fail fast uh, you know startup mm -hmm. style where it's okay for people to go out and make mistakes and they're empowered to do that for perhaps large uh, organizations that are extremely risk adverse then maybe you know there's a lot it, there's a lot more reason to hire like an expert who's going to keep that in check and right. that's a little bit more of a training wheels approach uh, that maybe can you know, you can inject that on the side while the team learns how to develop experimentation and then over time maybe transition to a decentralized model. And it's a, as you say, it's a spectrum of, of centralized to decentralized. So mm -hmm. there isn't one best option, it's just what's best for the organization at that particular point in time. Yeah, exactly. And, and companies will change, right? They, right. Uh, most organizations will actually start as centralized and just by definition if there's a one-person team that team is centralized mm -hmm. right? I guess they're both decentralized and centralized at the same time um, <laughs> and as you grow usually it'll go from one person to two to three and those people are usually still working together um, and so most companies at least at the 10 experiments per year mark are, are going to be in a centralized model usually okay great so we've talked a little bit about some of the models for uh, creating a high-velocity experimentation program. Uh, how does Wider Funnel work with these kind of organizations to help them implement and, and accelerate this program? For some companies, like if if we're going from zero to ten, then usually it's going to be just we want to watch you learn how to do this. Um, mm -hmm. And so, essentially, they we get involved and we can teach them the basics of how to set up an experiment and and so on. And so, expertise is really the top focus usually for for the very beginning. Um, but then going from 10 to 100, we're going to look back at the, the packet model, which is the process, accountability, the uh, culture, expertise, and technology, and we're going to want to get involved with the company and evaluate really where they're at. Um, and we'll reference our maturity benchmarks and the research that we've done to see how they stack up compared to their competitors and where uh, they're at in the market. Uh, and then from there, we're going to say, okay, you know, you may be a uh, a three out of five in, in culture, but maybe you're only a one out of five in process, uh, and then really dive into why that is and compare how that process is operating compared to where we, how we've seen successful models operate. Mm -hmm. um, with Waterfall and our partners, like, we don't need to necessarily own that whole program. We want the, the company to be successful and help uh, you know, our champion grow that culture from within mm -hmm. um, so that program can really scale. Right, so organizations today know they need to create experimentation is a core competency. Um, they just might not know which of these areas they have the biggest gaps in and where they need to improve. So yeah. we can help them maybe bypass those problems by doing some outsourcing of certain components and then help develop their program internally so they can uh, constantly increase their velocity. Yeah, zoom out like Henry Ford and see where are we at and what can we automate and improve next. Right, great. Well, thanks for your time, Mike. And uh, we, as always, if uh, we can help at Wider Funnel with any of your experimentation program, your velocity, or just creating better ideas, uh, you can email us at iwant at widerfunnel.com.
until next time, we'll end the next subject. Goodbye. Thank you.